This is a series of films that tells the history of contemporary fashion photography as seen through the eyes of models. On a very practical level, yeah. so when you're modelling, yeah. do you insist on your own soundtrack? Would you like to insist on your own soundtrack? Um, no, because I'm not sure if it would work for the shoe. Because right, my okay. own soundtrack is like me in my bedroom, listening right. to quite introverted, and, yeah. and me in my sort of cave as a person, you know? Yeah. So again, music is so deeply personal in that sense that I think if I put the music that I like on, we'd be having like, you know, a Mazzy star, goth, <laughs> cure, dance party, and it might not be right energy yeah. for, for, you know, for the, for the shoot. It, and they actually really enjoy when people put on their own music on a shoot because I'm so specific with my musical taste that yeah. I'm always like, wow, who knew that I liked that? Yeah, but that are, there, are there some, sometimes we get in the studio, um, are there some tracks you just think, you know, I really can't model with that on? Yes, there are, actually. And, um, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to name them, I was just curious. No, there definitely is. I just think, you know, it's funny, I did a shoot recently and somebody had like just house music on, like yeah. really, but like, it was like we're in a nightclub and I was like, listen, I'm not, yeah. I'm not 20. I'm not 20 years old anymore. I, we're like wearing beautiful McQueen gowns. It's not the right music. Let's put on a little bit of The Cure. Yeah. Let's create the fantasy because I do think music does get you into the mood of a shoot as well so mm -hmm. if the music isn't complementing yeah. what you're trying to get out of the model I think it's you know it's it is very powerful yeah. it is very powerful I mean I think you're quite astute to that though too I do think that you occasionally put on a like you put on a track that you know is maybe gonna yes yeah. yes probably yeah maybe if you don't so even realize it you know I mean but it's funny, Mycel will do that. Will he? Always. Right. It's always the right soundtrack yeah. to get you into it. And he'll true. say, he's like, listen to the music, listen to the music, yeah, yeah. feel it, you know? And so does Stephen work more by his voice coaching you or by the ambiance, by the... Both. both. By both. There's okay. definitely the ambiance is created yeah. and you really sort of walk on set and you've been listening to the music. Sometimes he'll give you a film to watch, you right. know, say, watch okay. this film, you know, it's what we're going for, you know? Right, or right. It's very subtle, but yeah. he knows what he's doing. I'm sure he does. Very the subtle. It's are... very subtle, but again, yeah. it's like, you know, I just shot the Pirelli calendar with him. Yeah. Va va voom, indeed. I mean, <laughs> a sort of like Varga girl, you know, and he yeah. had very sensual 50s music yeah. that was playing, and, you know, an old Monroe soundtrack. And, and it was just to get me into sort of that. Yeah. Spirit and it's very clever because it works. <laughs> I'm sure it does, and it's the proof is in the photographs that he creates with you. Um, I'm and you can tell I do love him, as you can tell. I can tell. <laughs> and I'm not surprised. Um, moving on. Oh, I'm so glad you're bringing this up. Um, because lots of God, this is really nice to going through all this. It's, oh, this good, is your life, the fashion <laughs> edition. <laughs> That's very I'm like, do you know Eamon Andrews? Isn't that Eamon Andrews who used to do this? Yes. The Red Book. The Red, red Book. book. It's a slight, not a fashion photograph, but it's still. Oh yeah, with Melissa I, Aftermore. Exactly. With Craig McDean, devil's yes. plaything. Oh my God, um, my ex-husband Jack would love to tease me with this all the time. Really, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but he would love to occasionally like belt out into devil's plaything, just <laughs> to like. <laughs> just so I should scene set a little bit. So this is when I first started show studio. Yes. And I was trying to find out, just you know, because the models yeah. could do a range of talents. Yeah. Um, um, there was a couple of, of girls who I knew could sing, and you were one of them. Right. But I hadn't yeah. heard you sing. Right. Um, and I think Craig sent this across as the first thing, which just <laughs> was amazing. This scene, Melissa's a, a real, and that's voice. where my singing career began. By the way, show was studio, it? you helped me out, Nick. You oh, gave please be good. because my friend Melissa, she um, obviously played in Smashing Pumpkins and in yeah, yeah. is an amazing, you know, musician in her own right. And, she said, you know, Craig, Craig, it's Craig Wills got sort of these wacky ideas and was like, let's go to the Chelsea Hotel and, <laughs> and do, you know, and do this. And I was really nervous, really nervous. And Melissa, because she was a friend, she'd heard me sing yeah. and was sort of talking with her friends like, Karen needs to make a record, you know, and needs to do this, but I was too shy about it. And yeah. she was like, you're going to do this. We're going to do this together and it's going to be fun. And she's, you know, big Black Sabbath Danzig fan and yeah. we just went for it but again it was this moment where I you know just took a deep breath and went, I know I can do this 
let's see how it goes. But it was so much fun. But like I said, it does crack me up this video because, you know, I always in the back of my head, I have sort of, you know, Jack being like, devil's blazing. <laughs> and the, the session itself, was it done in one take or did you have to do lots couple of takes? Of takes couple, couple of takes. takes, that was it. It was very right, quick. Okay. And it was in Melissa's um, apartment in the Chelsea Hotel that okay. I actually moved in to her apartment after she moved out. But I didn't stay very long right, in the Chelsea. It was haunted. Really? That place. It's got enough to be haunted with. It's got enough. Honestly, it was during another weird period of my life. And I literally just had, she had it decorated so beautifully. And I really sort of had this nostalgia about the Chelsea Hotel, yeah. how many incredible artists had lived there. And it is an amazing, it was sadly an amazing place. Yeah. But when I moved in after her, she took all her beautiful furniture. So it's just sort of, me in a blow up mattress <laughs> and a turntable yeah. and listening to Brian Eno. Excellent, very Chelsea hotel. Very yeah. Chelsea yeah. hotel. I had my sort of, you know, Brian Eno, God, it was really, you know, I mean, very intense. And I was listening to, you know, sort of Cocteau Twins yeah. and Eno, all the 4AD yeah, yeah, stuff. Sure, I was yeah. really, really getting into yeah. it. But again, it just was a very strange, peculiar time. And I remember, do you know the artist who, he passed away recently, Rene Ricard. Don't think so. He's a New York artist. He's a, and a poet. Really, right. very fascinating, fascinating man. I didn't yeah. know him very well, but I remember him um, coming with cold coffee. Yeah. To welcome me to the Chelsea, and he's sort of like shaking his hand, and he was like, "Welcome to the Chelsea," and I was like, "God, this place is amazing." But then it turned. My next door neighbor was. Um, are you agoraphobic if you're scared of people? I think no, so. No, agoraphobic is very scared of open spaces. Okay, well, maybe, I don't know, she's, I don't know what, this, um, what phobia you have if you're scared yeah. of people, but she's obviously somebody, I like to imagine sort of an old Warhol yeah. lady, you know, yeah. sort of always with her sort of hair and the brilliant makeup on, but whenever I would open my door and we'd be in the staircase together, she'd sort of look at me in fear and sort of hold the wall and sort of creep away from me and run mm -hmm. every time I would see her. And then I had another neighbor, it was just bonkers all the time, like bonkers, just, I, I don't know what was going on in there, but it was. But you say it was haunted? I felt, maybe I was haunted at the time, but I felt, yeah. I just never felt good there. I never had a good night's sleep. I was so into the Chelsea, I was in room 411 and I, I just, I just felt like I could fall apart there. Right. I felt like if I don't leave this place, I might be that lady who's sort of yeah. hiding in the staircase away from people. I just think my personality at the time was, I was so enraptured by that period, yeah. you know, by the Velvet Underground, by all that, that I just realized that there, I saw the flip side. I saw the flip side of those glory days, yeah. you know, and I saw the flip side being very, very fascinating people and very brilliant people who were profoundly damaged, right. you know, and I, there was just this, there was just, maybe it's a sixth sense, and I've kind of always had this in my life, when I know it's time yeah. to get out, right. I'll get out. If my, you know, maybe it's coming from sort of a northern upbringing and sort yeah. of having to Really, I mean, as my dad says, you're a grafter. Right, <laughs> it's just that you, thing, though, when, when I was in the Chelsea, where, I mean, I, I'm, I'm such an admirer of it. It's a historical yeah. fragment of New York City. You know, yeah. it really represents yeah. so much, you know, brilliance that has existed there. But when I was there myself, it was just, I just was kind of coming out of falling in love with, um, with derelicts. Right. You know, with sort of like the derelict side of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think yeah. every, uh, particularly me, I mean, I just had a real morbid side for a while and would really yeah. sort of romanticize sort of the bleakness of the world. Yeah. And I was coming out of that and I went, you know, I think I just need a nice apartment. <laughs> yeah. A nice apartment with a fireplace and yeah. maybe some, not a mattress on the floor. Still love Brian Eno, but you know, yeah. let's not have it be so... Um, have to prove your worth by sort of being yeah. miserable or something. It's very, you know, it's like, a, a, there's some real, there's real melancholy and misery. Yeah, you know? and a beautiful melancholy. There's beautiful, and I romance in that daily, yeah. but there's also another element of it where it can just become sort of a dangerous melancholy. And yeah. I just think for me, I was like, I'm bordering on 
a place that I probably shouldn't walk down. And I yeah. just then, yeah, went, went on my merry way, packed up my air mattress, gave my pots and pans to the neighbor, and was like, let me get an apartment with nice furniture. Yeah, yeah and that's what I did. <laughs> Excellent. Well, so that's my Chelsea Hotel story that's good. with Melissa Aftor. <laughs> that's very good. And um, the beginning of your singing career. Yes, it was the beginning uh, of my singing career. It was the beginning fantastic. of just falling in love with music, you yeah, know, and really. It's obviously, super important to you. It's massively important to me. I mean, it, songs have. You know, it's been, I still listen to music like a fan. When I hear a beautiful yeah. song, I just daydream. I feel like music just has that power where you can create your own meaning mm -hmm. towards that song. Yeah. And it's so individual what a person's perception is of music, the way it is of any art form, yeah. you know? But I think music, because it's not put there in front of you, you can't say, that's red paint or that's yeah. this. You you. You know the colors of what the music is, but it's still very mysterious. And that's what yeah. I love about music. It's yeah. just that power to just take you away. 